I'm sure you know the problem. You see an enemy, you want to aim at him, but it takes what feels like ages. Wouldn't it be nice if you could ADS and aim at your opponent like instantly? Ladies and gentlemen, step right up. Let me tell you why you should be playing the SAG. As always, we start with the modability. So how well can we mod this weapon? And in this regard, the SAG is a wonderful piece of equipment because it shares a lot of mods with the ordinary AK and the M4. And if we know one thing for sure, then M4 and AKs are the equivalent of Swiss army knives. And no, I don't mean those. I mean, yeah, more like that. On top of that, we have already a rail installed. So we can screw our scopes, laser point, whatever you want to have on top directly onto the weapon. This, of course, can also be seen negatively because most of the parts are fixed and cannot be changed. But I'll leave that to the philosophers. The glasses have full, glass have empty, I don't know. But it also means the weapon right off the box is ready to be used and you don't need a lot of attachments similar to the RPK. Another nice thing about the weapon is that basically the base stats are very, very good. Especially the ergonomics. Again, somewhat similar to the RPK. You actually got hardly anything to change on this weapon to be able to play it efficiently. In theory, you can just screw it aside on top and you're ready to go. But I know by now that the Tarkov community likes to mod, so let's look at some mods. As always, for recoil reduction, I would recommend that you focus on the muzzle brake and the stock, because those give by far the most amount of recoil reduction per ruble spent. So it's the most cost-efficient way to get your recoil down, because grips are pretty bad in this regard. So I would recommend really focus on those two, the muzzle brake and the stock, and then compensate the lost ergonomics with a grip, because in terms of ergonomics, grips are actually pretty good. The only problem is the flashlight, because the only way to mount one is with one of two rails. And well, they are pretty expensive because, well, everybody else knows that too. You can buy it mechanic level 2 though, but yeah, level 2 is level 20 and that's pretty high. But you can also trade it a mechanic level 1 for one measuring tape. Or alternatively, you buy the other one at skill level 2. So it's not that big of a deal with some knowledge. So in summary, you don't have to mod the weapon. But you can, and if you want to, you can do it very cost efficient and very early, which is amazing. And that brings us to the next topic. How affordable is the SAG? There are two versions of this gun, the short and the long one. And since the whole thing is really one piece, we cannot change it. It's different from, for example, an M4. There, just the barrel changes the length of the gun. But with this one, it's really two completely different versions. You can get the long one for 72,000, the short one for 81,000. But on the flea market, they are usually between 45 to 50,000 both. And the difference between the two is really minimal. The long one is just a bit more accurate because, well, it has a longer barrel. And okay, it's more than a bit. It's almost 0.5 times more accurate, but we have an accuracy of 0.6 MOA, you can still snipe pretty effectively on a range that is designed for an assault rifle. Now, I'd say the main difference is really that if you want to go to places where it's narrow, like for example dorms, then the short version is better for that job. So that means we get a very good weapon with good stats out of the box, pretty similar to an RPK, for just 40, 50,000 on the flea market. And that's Damn good start. But we all know that in Tarkov, the stick is not really important. It's the ammo. So how is the SAG doing there? Well, that's the famous AK-545 caliber. And the caliber has gone through a lot of changes lately. And currently, most people are talking about those three rounds. The PP, the BP, and the BT. And now say that very fast three times in a row. Now, the early states of the wipe DPP is absolutely amazing. Very cost efficient with around 300 rubles and it gets the job done. But later on against 
level 5 armor and doesn't look that good because most people in the end game like to run something like a Giselle. And against that armor, the PP needs around 10 bullets to get through, and that's way too much. The BT, on the other hand, only needs 4, meaning BT is the way to go against End Wipe. The problem for most is just that the BT is only available after you've finished Punisher Part 4, and you only get 120 rounds per restock. This is especially hard after the ammo has been taken off of the flea market, and why the restock isn't any higher than 120, nobody knows. The next best option would be BS. And this round is the end game variant for the 545 caliber with 51 penetration. It can handle the big boys. The only problem is you can only get it at proper level 3 and you can only trade it. And you have to trade it for two hot rods and two Marlboro cigarettes. And the problem with this is that that's insanely expensive. A hot rod is easily 10,000 upwards and the Marlboro usually 15 to 20,000 a piece because most people just don't pick those up. So supply and demand and there you go. And this means that one round of BS costs around 1,500 to 2,000 rubles. Exactly. Now let's compare that. The M855A1, one of the best bullets in the game, that's gear for 526 rubles. And the 762 BP, one of the best rounds in the game, and probably will be if they don't change anything in the next wipe as well. 1320 for that one. Even the M62 is available for 1200 rubles. This means the BS is the most expensive round in that category. Plus, you have to trade instead of buying it, which makes it more complicated and therefore less people want to do that. And BSG wonders why nobody is playing in AK. But oh well, I digress. <laughs> but what you can do to save some ammunition is to mix BT and BS. So put the BT in your mech first, then the BS. This way you shred the armor and kill him with BT, in the worst case, because usually with a single fire weapon you don't need that much ammo. But nevertheless, when you play a lot of AKs, then you go through those 120 shots of BT rather quickly. And then, well, you have to play another weapon or switch down to BP, BP. So in conclusion, the rounds are amazing, if they were a little bit more available. And yes, you can find a lot of them on reserve and woods, but who wants to go for a couple of runs just to be able to play a specific gun when all the other weapons have plenty of ammo available? Except for the ash, maybe. So here's my little cry for help to BSG. I love the AK. I want to play more AK. Please give me the ammo. But then, how is the SAG doing on close range? Surprisingly well. At first I thought, well, it's a single fire weapon with, well, not M62, but the low recoil and the high ergonomics really allow it to act very, very fast in narrow spaces. and makes it pretty easy to land precise and consistent taps. So it's very simple and easy to use. Just like a Swiss Army knife. Yeah, this time I prefer the one. Yeah. <laughs> this enables you to play very, very agile and aggressive with that weapon. Which, well, also surprised me, but I've tried it and it works insanely well. And it's very intuitive, especially if you come from other shooters like Rainbow Six. And believe me, you will learn to love the fast ADS time. For those that don't know, the ADS time just means the time it takes you to go from a shouldered position to a looking through your scope position. And the SAG has another super advantage for anyone who has some difficulties controlling the recoil of a gun. Because, well, you don't have to. With a single fire weapon, the recoil basically only determines how fast you can tap the weapon. So, if you get used to a good rhythm or whatever build you create with that gun, you don't have to worry about recoil at all. Only if you tap too fast, the recoil will kick in again and your weapon will, well, shoot to hell and I don't know. And this can be very, very enjoyable for people who have really trouble with the recall system in Tarkov. 
And also because it's a very short weapon, almost like an SMG, it can also work in places like dorms, factory, a resort and shoreline or wherever you want to take it. But where the weapon really starts to shine is on mid to high range. Because of the insanely high ergonomics that this weapon has, you can create builds like 100 ergo is not a problem. And that means when you spot an enemy, you can scope in and take a shot in no time. This is insanely good for missions like Shooter Born in Heaven. Because it also means that you can look for a scope for a very long time. Because with more ergonomic, you have less endurance strain. And even in situations where you get surprised and you need to look for your really big scope, you can do that because of the high ergonomics. That means, well, if you get surprised, you can still use your scope different than with many other guns that just don't have that much ergo. Besides, both variants, as already mentioned, have a very, very good accuracy. 1.6 on the smaller one and even 1.1 on the longer one. That's insanely good. This is already pretty close to a bolt action rifle. Only the bullet speed is not quite as great. Because if we look only at the speed, we should play Igolnik. The problem with Igolnik is that already on 100 meters, the ammunition is no longer able to land a one-shot headshot. Because over distance, you have a damage drop-off. And for Igolnik, that means 34 damage on 100 meters for the Igolnik. So even if you hit the head, it will still be running. The best choice here would be the 7 and 40, but, but that round is a myth. In 1000 rates, I found 60 rounds. <clears throat> BSG. So the only one left here is the BS, but for that one as well. 200 meters and it's no longer a one-shot headshot. On the other hand, you have to say that with an assault rifle, are you really gonna snipe above 200 meters? Because usually, for those distances, you bring a gun that is better designed for the job. So up to 200 meters, it's a pretty good gun, but on mid-range, it's way better because you don't have the limitations of the ammunition. So in summary, it is a very cheap weapon, it's available, it's accessible, it is easy to mod, the mods are cheap, the ammo is available pretty early, although uh, not too many rounds, and the weapon can be used at pretty much every distance in every situation. So all in all, I would say currently one of the best budget weapons that we have in Tarkov. And it's a lot of fun to play with it, I had rarely that much fun with a gun than I had with the SAG in the last couple of days and weeks. So I can really recommend the gun, especially for people that, well, have to do missions on maps they don't really like, like Shoreline. And there is probably one of the best budget guns currently that still lets you slap. So as always, if it was helpful, don't forget to thumbs up the video as it really helps the channel. Subscribe for more videos like this. And of course, I'll see you in the next video. And until then, have fun.